What's going on, baseball fans? How are we doing? So the Blue Jays and the Mariners have been having good seasons this year, and they find themselves within five games of a wild card spot. So in this video, I'm going to go over what I think their chances are of securing that second wild card. Let's go talk about it. Let's start off with the Toronto Blue Jays. They're 64 and 58 on the year. They're four and a half back of that second wild card spot, but in their last 10 games, they're only three and seven. They're gonna have to tighten the ship if they want any chance of landing that second wild card spot. Let's talk about the Blue Jays in terms of the numbers. We all know that offense is fantastic. They rank second in all of Major League Baseball, only behind the Houston Astros. That lineup has bats top to bottom. Vlad Jr. having an MVP kind of a season. George Springer, coming back and he's been great. Marcus Semien, an MVP kind of a season. I mean, the list goes on and on for the Toronto Blue Jays. The starting pitching, or actually before I get to the starting pitching, the fielding, they've been fine defensively. 13 defensive runs saved on the year, a 2.0 UZR for the Blue Jays. So defensively, they're fine. They have their moments where they're not great defensively, but then they have their moments where they look really good out there. When we take a look at the starting pitching, um, on the year, they do only rank 17th, but lately, ever since they've gotten Jose Barrios in the month of August, they have the second best starting pitching, eight and four this past month with a 3.09 ERA and a 3.15 FIP. This Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff, the starting pitching staff, they definitely have enough talent to be able uh, to get them to the playoffs. This rotation top to bottom is really solid, especially since you've acquired a Jose Barrios. Um, Robbie Ray has been having a phenomenal year a great bounce back year a 2.79 era 11 strikeouts per nine nine and five over 24 starts hinge Jim ryu has been solid steven matz has been solid alec manoa has been a, a, a very nice story since being called up and then jose barrios since coming over to the blue jays through four starts a 3.80 era with a 4.16 fip so uh, top to bottom this starting rotation is great the only problem with the Toronto Blue Jays this year is the bullpen. It, this bullpen has just been not effective this year. If we take a look, they only rank 27th on the year in relief pitching. That's not going to get it done for Toronto. And if we take a look, um, recently in the month of August, I mean, you know, even after acquiring some arms for that bullpen by the deadline, they're still not any better. Uh, 27th still in the month of August, they have a 4.85 ERA for that bullpen for this month and a 4.79 FIP under nine strikeouts per nine. Toronto's Blue J or the Toronto Blue Jays bullpen, they're gonna have to step this up. If we take a look at how they do in one run games toronto has not been effective in these close games so if we take a look here only eight and 14 against one run in, or in one run games so two and nine in extra inning games i mean so these close games they need to tighten that up a little bit if we take a look at how they do against good teams i mean, I mean they're they've been fine i mean or uh, one game over 500 so I mean, they've been able to, you know, get it done against these good teams. But, you know, again, it's the, it's those one run games for Toronto where, you know, in those extra inning games, they just can't seem to lock it down, you know, in these tight ones. So Toronto, if we take a look at fan graphs, Toronto currently gives them a 10.6% chance of winning a wild card and an 11% chance of winning of making the playoffs i mean i don't see how they have any chance of winning that division they're pretty far out as of right now but the wild card uh it's a it's a pretty low percentage not very high but there is definitely a chance they can go on a run they have the offense to get it done that starting pitching has been awesome it's just the bullpen they've got to get that bullpen tightened up so we'll have to wait and see for the toronto blue jays but before I move on, I do want to point out the Toronto Blue Jays schedule. Overall, when you combine the winning percentage of the teams that they'll be facing down the stretch, they have a 501 uh, strength of schedule. If we take a look at that schedule for the Blue Jays in the month of September, it's going to be a tough month. You got, sure, you have some games against the Orioles, but you got the A's, you got the Yankees, you got the Rays. I mean, that Twins team, they have talent on that team. You got them for, what, seven more games? Um, you got another series against the Rays. The last series of the year is against the Yankees. So for the Blue Jays, I mean, personally, I definitely think they have a chance with that offense, with the starting pitching the way it's been lately. You know, they have a chance. The question is, is the bullpen going to be able to, you know, tighten things up in that last month? I think they can do it, but 
In the bullpen, they're going to have to lock it down, especially against these good teams. Up next, let's talk about the Seattle Mariners. What a good team the Mariners have been this year. 67 and 58, only three games back. I think a lot of people saw this Mariners team being really good in the coming years with all these good young players coming up. I don't think a lot of people saw this team being this close in the standings at this point of the season. For me personally, going back into the offseason, I remember saying that I could definitely see this team hang around in this wild card race you know until the end you know they have some good pitching on this team they have some decent bats on the team so for me personally i'm not surprised to see them in this spot now the question is are they going to be able to get the job done that's the question for me lately they've been just playing great they have been a bit up and down this year where they tend to go on these runs and then they kind of fade away but then they kind of bounce back but they're seven and three in their last 10. um if we take a look at how they've been doing against these good teams 500 record against teams over 500 so that is something uh where seattle they can they've shown they can hang around with these better teams if we take a look though their strength this year will is these close games and the bullpen has been a strength we'll talk about that bullpen here in a second but taking a look at the one run games they're 26 and 14 in one run games and extra inning games are 12 and 4 i mean they lock it down when it comes to these tight ones so and the big reason for that is the bullpen they have the third best bullpen this year a 3.70 fip a 3.99 era on the year the Seattle Mariners bullpen, they really get the job done. And a big reason for that is they don't give up a lot of home runs under one home run per nine from that bullpen all year. If you take a look at the names here, Paul Sewald, he's been having a fantastic year. Uh, Steckenrider, Graven was good until he got traded, but then they brought back Diego Castillo as well. Uh, Anthony Meiswicks has been having a good year of 4.17 ERA, but the FIP is a lot better, 3.26. And if we take a look as well at a Diego Castillo, the while well, the er the fip is high it's a 6.81 so the advanced numbers don't like him very much but at least the era it's a 3.86 so at least the results have been there he's been decent but you'd like to see those advanced numbers get a little bit better if we take a look at the other aspects of this team one area i worry about with the mariners is just the offense overall a 221 team batting average on the year uh you know, negative 50 offensive runs above average so seattle you know they're if they want a chance at this thing they're gonna have to step it up with the bats down the stretch 22nd in offense for the year but if we take a look at how they've been doing recently uh if we take a look here i mean they're only 23rd in the month of august so like i said they're gonna have to step this up the starting pitching if we take a look at the starting pitching here for Seattle, they currently rank, where are you at Seattle? I cannot see you anywhere here. The 23rd in starting pitching on the year, but it has been better. Logan Gilbert came up recently and he's just been solid this year since coming up. Uh, if we take a look recently at this starting pitching, it's been a lot better than what it ranks. 15th overall in the month of August. Uh, a 3.73 ERA this month, a 4.34 FIP. So the starting pitching, they've been able to hold their own. And again, it's the bullpen that's the strength. So they're pretty much what they're doing is they're relying on what they're starting pitching. You know, they, they can hold their own, but then the bullpen comes in and locks it down. So um, the strategy so far has been paying off and only find themselves three games back. If we take a look at fan graphs, the chance that they give them of making the playoffs only a 2.9% chance. Now, the one thing with the Mariners is their schedule, only a, a 512 strength of schedule. If we go take a look at Seattle, they definitely have some tough matchups coming up. Um, so let's pull up the schedule here. Um, Seattle they have been able to hold their own against good teams like i said they have a 35 and 35 record against teams over 500 but they're gonna have you know some more tough matchups coming up kansas city they got coming up soon then they have the astros you know easier series of the diamondbacks but they've been playing better recently so then they have the astros again you got the diamondbacks again red Sox, and they got the a's so you know they got a lot more games left against teams that are over 500 so we're gonna have to wait and see with this mariners team i feel like personally you know it's it's gonna be tough for this mariners team i feel like they're just not quite there but 
we got one more month to go here. So Seattle, hey, if my Red Sox don't get a wild card, the other team, the team that I would love to see get that wild card are the Seattle Mariners. So, um, yeah, Mariners, they've been having a good season. Are they going to be able to get it done, though? So let me know what you think of the Blue Jays and the Mariners down below in the comments. Do you think either of those teams have a chance of making the playoffs? But that's all I have for right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.